last actually chapter of this course which is about the power electronic control of the machine so up to now we talked about the actuators about the DC machines and about the AC machines but at the end we also need to control them we just don't need to know how they work even the main purpose is was that and we promised this at, at the very first session that we are going to talk about this so power electronic where they have been used in many places in fact they are revolutionizing the power system for one uh, they have changed it very much nowadays we have the power electronic everywhere the, the solar panels are very much dependent on the power electronic to be controlled wind generators are very much dependent on them it's not only them if you have heard about the high voltage dcs and super grid in europe and maybe even further beyond the europe it also based on these HVDCs. Myself have done, I should say, all of my research in my undergraduate and graduate studies now more than 10 years on the power application of power electronic in power system and even I'm going to continue on that. But it's not only power system is changing. Here, how many students here are from the aerospace engineering? Here, this figure I get is from a paper published by NASA about the application of the power electronics in aerospace technology. There have been many different cases, but the most one case is that talk about the airplane and different power electronic systems that have been used inside. It's more than one application that has been used here. But it's not power electronic all about the fancy items, about the wind generators, solar panels, or if you have a very modern and advanced airplane. Every one of us has is using power electronic daily. The charger that you have for your cell phones is a power electronic. If you are maybe too young to remember previous, if 20 years ago you want something to convert the voltage from 120 to 5 volt it was a bulky heavy item because it was a transformer in fact uh, mainly and then we have some voltage rectifier but nowadays there are tiny there are light and the performance is even better in, in everyday lives but for this course we are not going to talk about everything or anything here we are very much interested in using them control the machines or motors so Tesla machines even every electric machine here you can see in fact two applications of the power electronic the charger that has been used to charge the machine is power electronic so I'm not going to talk about that it's more related to my research interests but power electronic is used to control the motors inside the vehicle and as we said in very first session, one of the good things about the Tesla motors is used induction, Tesla machines is used to induction motors with power electronics. Three phase induction motors similar to what we have discussed. And we are going to talk about it shortly in this course, in the remaining session. Even in home, if you have some of these modern refrigerators, they are also based on the movement of the power electronic. Single phase induction machine or three phases with some of the converters that we are going to talk, and that's why they are much more efficient than previous refrigerators and work much better. And if you are interested in drones, there are some kind of AC machines. We haven't discussed that exact this machine is brushless this machine. If we have time at the very final session, we are going to talk about it briefly. I'm not even sure about that, but in fact, in kind of this machine and some kind of the converter that we are going to talk about them in this session and next session are used there for the drone, whether this commercial one or those the more complicated drones that are used for specific applications. The point I want to make is that 
What kind of damage to tools here is very much related to your work, uh, whether you are a mechanical engineer or aerospace engineer. And we haven't created this course to create a job for me in electrical engineering department. We have enough course there to teach. But it can be really useful for your cause if you are mechanical or aerospace engineer. Enough of these stories. Let's get more technical. So we talked about two types of the machines, the DC machines and AC machines. And we said from the start, we said we are interested in the speed control. For the separately excited DC machine or permanent magnet special kind of that, we talk about one of the best methods to use that is changing the voltage supply. But for that, what we need is in fact a variable voltage supply. So here, sorry, we need to change the voltage supply. So in this case, a variable voltage supply 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 is needed to control the speed of the DC machine in case of induction machine we just talked about it about the method that we keep the flux constant ES over omega is constant and decreasing the frequency of this the uh, machine. For that case, we need to change both voltage and frequency. So we need variable voltage, variable frequency, power supply. But to make, to construct, to build such a power supplies, we are, we need to use what we call it as power electronic switches. Power electronic switches are in contrast to mechanical switches. Mechanical switches really have some kind of motors try to get the to disconnect the two part of the circuit or connect them but the power electronic switches there are solid state there are some kind of the new, uh, more new one which based on the it's only is for solid state circuits that have been used there and there are different in many different aspects there are better let me say from different aspects one of them is that there are much faster so for a mechanical motor to disconnect to contact of a switch sometimes take in best cases that they make it really fast it takes about uh, let's say five millis or even more I think 50 millisecond 100 millisecond you cannot go lower so it's not that fast but with the power electronic switches with solid state switches we can get to the micros even maybe some cases lower microseconds to disconnect and connect them so way much higher switching is possible here switching frequency i mean the other thing is that they have longer lifetime So, especially in mechanical switches, they can't, they measure the life of the switch with the number of times it is turned on and turned off. Because each time you do this, you are, you, you age the, the, your uh, switch, in fact. So, you cannot do it very much. But assume that you want something to work at microsecond or even milliseconds. So, you want to do 
1000 times switching just in one second mechanical switch cannot tolerate that for long time if even they can do something like that the other thing is that there are using low power gating signal to be turned on and off so we consume some energy to turn on and turn off the switch and mechanical switches it's very obvious you usually have some kind of motor or actuator that you need to energize it to connect the two uh, to connect to contact or to disconnect it to contact here also we need it we call it gating signal we are going to talk about it more in detail just in a few slides but the power that we are going to use it's much smaller much less energy is needed to turn off and turn down them so it means uh, it gets everything much simpler for us to do and the other thing is that they have no noise at least much lower noises and it is very very effective especially if you go to the industrial site or something it's the problem i, I don't know you hear or not with the electrical machines with electric vehicles that they don't generate enough noise so it's not good for pedestrian and other people they cannot understand the car is approaching so some states in united states and some countries they are going to make some rules that they artificially generate that noise to make sure that pedestrian understand so everything is much smoother much more silent no no much noise is going to be generated here so it's another benefits that we have with these power electronic switches let's talk about the two most famous type of the power electronic switches that we are also going to use it in this uh, course one is power diet diet is in fact simplest power electronic switch we don't want to get everything sophisticated for you in this case so we talk about the simplest one which is diet uh, diets are shown usually with this the symbol you can see on your left i think some of you is already familiar with this symbol here this part is anode pole here is cut it the current has the same direction as the triangle in the symbol shows you and the vd is defined like this so in other words vd is equal to v anode minus v cut So how this diet works, when I be in this direction is positive, the diet also comes to the the current to flow through it. It's a very small voltage drop. There is no problem. It's like a short circuit. It's like that you don't have a diet but simple wire. But if you expose this diode to a negative voltage, 
the DB becomes negative. It doesn't follow any current go through this side. So in other words, if any current tries to go to the opposite direction, it opposes this thing. It doesn't follow that. And it will start to get some negative voltages because of that. But it can withstand that voltage, no problem. But doesn't follow with the current go in the opposite direction. So if I want to show you the characteristic of this, that if ID is greater than zero, VD is almost constant, and it's something between 0.6 volt to 1 to 2 volt for different diodes. It depends on the diodes, but it's usually considered constant. It's not going to change. But if VD is low than zero, ID is equal to zero. If I want to show it here, it will be here is about 0.6 volt to 1.2 volt and we know this as IV or current voltage characteristic of diet. So as you can see, only positive ID is allowed, and the voltage that's going to across this, if ID is zero, is negative. Any question up to here? But this 0.6 volt or 1.2 volt is usually much smaller than voltages that we face in a motor control. We just talk about the motor with 460 volt or 690 volt. So, you can simply ignore this 0.6 or 1.2 voltage in many cases. And it's the case, in fact, for many of the power, diode, power diodes. So, since, let me write this down, that 0.6 volt to 1.2 volt is often... smaller than the other voltages present in a motor control application it can be ignored in other words VD is almost equal to zero as a result we usually show the diet characteristic something like that. Ignore that 0.6 or 1.2 volt. So it's even more interesting. So it's really when you have conductive voltage, the voltage drop is almost zero. It's like a short circuit. So in the direction of the current, the direction even shown in the symbol, the voltage drop is almost zero is like and short circuit. But when on the other part, when we, the current wants to follow in the opposite direction, it works like 
an open circuit. Any negative voltage it can tolerate, but doesn't allow any current to go through it. So let me write this for positive currents the diet acts as the closed circuit and for any negative voltages it acts acts as an open switch switch which interrupts interrupts the flow of current so it's not bi-directional it's just one direction the other thing is that was there any way we control it there was no signal for control it in fact diodes are uncontrolled it just depends on the die in the circuit circumstances that they allow it or don't allow it we cannot go and say to some diode okay now open now close they are uncontrolled so the diet is an um, oh no. uncontrolled uncontrollable sorry uncontrollable switch as it cannot be turned on or off by an external Any question up to here? Hmm. Any question? Go ahead. Uh, there were some cases that you can force a diet but it's it's not that simple and easy we just we are going to talk some other models that can be much easier so remember that we need to do that commanding with much lower power but here if you want to do it you should put another circuit to expose it to the negative voltage and the rating of this is the most rating of the whole circuit so it's not a very reasonable economic solution what is possible you are right. Also, how does it actually, how does the diode do it for like current? Um, how does it only allow current to go one way and not the other? 
It's about based on the solid state condition that it has from because of an honest correction that the uh, electrons can go the, on one side. If we want to discuss it, we should see the power, the physics of the element, how it's built it and how it's make it. If you like, we can, you can come to my office to talk in more detail, but it takes a long time, I think, to discuss it now. Okay, any other question? Okay, so as we just discussed, diode as good as it is, uh, is not a controllable, commandable device. So we try to find, actually they tried long time ago to find some solution, some other power uh, switches that are controllable. And we come to the second most popular power electronic switches that are known as power transistors. There are different types to the power transistors. And three of the most famous ones uh, I have shown you here. This one, this symbol at the left is known as bipolar junction. transistor or in short we call it BJT here we have the collector here we call this port collector this port emitter and here is base so the current goes from collector to emitter and the voltage is also measured between collector and emitter. So what is base? It is that commanding port. We use the base to command the switch to turn on and off. And in this case, we use a current IB to command the switch. And because we use command, the current to command the switch to turn off or on, it's known as current control. BJT is one it is actually maybe one of the oldest power transistors that have been used long time ago and invented before the others. Nowadays is not as common as it used to be previously. Then we had this symbol at the middle, which is metal oxide. semiconductor or field effect transistor that we abbreviated as MOSFET. Here, the ports are named differently, drain, source, and here we have gate. The current comes again from the drain and goes to the source, and the voltage is between drain and source, but we use the gate for the signaling, for turning on and off the switch. But this time, we use the voltage. And believe me, it's a big advantage for this kind of switch. So it is voltage control.
The third one, one on the right, is actually the newest and the most common nowadays in industry. It's used more than the other ones. It's known as insulated gate by sorry bipolar transistor on short we call it IGBT I don't want to discuss how it's built but it's somehow combination of two previous one it's more uh, more obvious when we see the name of the ports here is collector and here is emitter very similar to BJT but here we have gate similar to MOSFET so current similar to BJT goes from collector to emitter voltage is measured between collector and emitter but similar to MOSFET we use the gate voltage to signal to comment the switch to turn on or off so this one is also voltage controlled these three types are very common and I should say there are still researchers are new switches we, it's not like that that's the switches we are done with them and they are doing very very interesting things previously most of them is based on the silicon and uh, that kind of element now they are trying to use another elements in them and improve them and many interesting research are going on in this aspect any question okay so what are the common characteristics of these three so what I said we have these three third ports to control them which is a base or gate and it can be in much lower power rating which is a big advantage here so they can be turned on by application of a relatively low power power low power common signal to their third terminal which is gate or base the removal of The signal results in turning the switch switch off. So we usually generate that common signal by some microprocessor and microprocessor output is very low power 
we don't want to have a huge circuit or high power circuit to generate and turn these signals to that common signal. We want them to be as small as possible because it's part of efficiency. If we use high power to turn off or turn down the switches, the efficiency will be low. Similar to diet, when they are on, they very much work like as a closed circuit. That's like similar to wire. The voltage drop on V you know, between collector and emitter, and in case of the MOSFET between drain and source, is very small. In many cases, it's ignored at zero. So when on, the switch, the switches, the switches act as closed circuits with small voltage small voltage drop up similar to diets but when they are off they are a bit different now they can withstand positive voltage no negative voltage if we are going to expose them to negative voltage they break down and it's in fact we were going a longer way to try to protect them from any negative voltage we don't want them to be exposed to any negative voltage but they can withstand any positive voltage so they can withstand positive voltage however they should not be subjected to negative voltages. So here is the difference with second difference with diets. First they are controllable, secondly they can withstand positive voltages, no negative voltage. And very finally, when off, the switch current is very small. Practically zero. Oh, like open circuit. Any question up to here? Okay. You may get frustrated with three different symbols and each of them have three ports 
and different names even there are don't be worried we are not going to force you to remember them and even work with them in most of the cases we are going to use a generic symbol for them so that generic symbol will be something like this here we have gate or comment the voltage is here to here and here is the current so we are not going to very much focus on BJT, MOSFET or IGBT in most of the cases we use the generic symbol we don't very much expect from you to find that to distinguish them very much in many cases in real world nowadays as i said igbt is very common but it doesn't mean that the others have not is not in use anymore the other thing is that you see we get rid of the gate signal the gate circuits there instead of that we just consider it as a signal and we consider it binary so its gate is one is the comment to be to turn on the switch and if it's off it means that turn off the switch and we usually we use it simply with g so the gate signal is represented by G and consider it to be consider it to assume the binary values which are 0 or 1 so perfect case for generating with some microprocessors binary values but usually we get it to some power amplifier before we fit them to the real power circuit because the microprocessor is very low power in many cases it doesn't work to connect them directly to the switches but this part is not going to be discussed with, uh, here so when the switch is off is like here now here we have g equal to zero or switch off and i will be greater than zero and oh I will be equal to zero sorry and V is greater than that zero and when switch is off in T equal to one which on
I is greater than zero, but the voltage is zero. I just here want to show you how the gate signal is working. In general case, usually we use it with that open circuit four, this G has no values, and it means it can be both. So we just put G and show the open circuit, it can be the open one, the one on the top. So it can be both off or on. But in these cases, I want to show you how the G is represented with closed and open circuit. So I draw these two below. Okay, any question up to here? Nice. Okay, so for all of these three circuits, we said they have two common features. First of all, we said there are one directions. So the current can, can only come from this upper port to the lower port. It cannot go the other way. It is not by directional switches. There are just one direction from the upper port to the lower port. It's like that. The other problem, as I said, is that when they are, it is not for the honest state. For the honest state, it never can expose them to any negative voltage. It will result in breakdown. It damages the switches. So we have a problem with the on state and a problem with the off state of these switches. So let's write them down. Transistors must not be subjected to negative voltages when they are off they are incapable of following negative currents in the on state. We solve both problems with one solution. What we are going to do, we are going to add a diet in parallel to them, but in opposite direction. So what's happening here? When it's on, the voltage drops to zero and current can go in from upper to lower, no problem. But if the current comes in opposite direction, what will happen? No diet can try to conduct the current. The voltage drops to zero, it can conduct the current in the same direction of the diet, no problem. <coughs> when we go to the on the state, in the on the state, here the voltage should be positive. That means the opposite voltage polarity is used for the diode. 
Giant also can have any negative voltage, but it never allows to go to the giant positive voltage, which is the negative voltage of transistor. If it wants to go there, giant is hard to conduct its current to prevent that. So never our switches are going to expose to a negative voltage. And because this is parallel, but it is opposite direction, we call this anti-parallel diode. Anti-parallel, sorry, parallel diode. In some references, you may see the freewheeling diode as well because they allow the current to freewheel in them. And it can be added in all three of them. We call these two together, these two together, as a switch cell. They make a cell, a switch cell. Any question? Yes, in antiparallel connection. So similar to the previous case, we don't use any three of them separately. We want to make everything simpler here. So let's use a one generic symbol. Sorry. Oh, what am I doing that? Here we have the current I voltage V and we have the gate signal or G. So what's happening? When switch is on, it can for sure, like before, have the positive current. So in on a state, here is on a state. If it gets off, it can, like before, tolerate any positive voltage, no problem. But if in an state, we have the current in opposite direction, diode starts to conduct the current for us. The voltage, the V, remains zero, but we have the current in opposite direction. So, we will have this. So, this part is for on that diode is conducting but if in off state we have some current in opposite direction and switch can doesn't allow it to go through it so it tries to expose some negative voltage that there but diode start to conduct that current and prevent that positive that negative voltage so it can also be for off a state. In both cases, it's due to diet. We never go to the negative voltage now. And it's IV characteristic of the switch cell. IV characteristic of switch cell. 
In fact, this combination is so much common that in many, most of the cases, you don't need to go and buy one transistor and one diode and connect them in onto parallel. In most commercial ways, the switch cells are available. In most of the off-shelf off -shelf the cases, they sell you the switch cell, not the single transistor and single uh, diode separate from each other. So, most off the shelf transistors already come as switch cells and these switch cells are very basic component that we are going to make our converters our power supply variable voltage supply that we need in our cases Uh, do you want to go and talk about some of the questions of the exam or continue the teaching to power electronics? Do you mean the exam or the midterm? Meter. Yeah. Meter, yes. yes. Do you have such a, a strict no, like our friends? Everyone is yes. You have one no here and one yes and other are silent. <laughs> it's my choice now. Okay, they're just beside you. Okay.